part one of this mainline journey, we traveled nearly eight miles in all, from the Forest Park terminus in the east to three stops in Maywood, two stops in Bellwood, two stops in Hillside, one stop in Berkeley, then onwards to four stops in Elmhurst, and we finished up by traversing over Salt Creek and Illinois Route 83 and entering into Villa Park. As you may have noticed, we ended part one with a little tongue-in-cheek fanfare as we arrived at the site of one of the seven surviving in C2 Chicago Aurora and Elgin stations. This station, the Villa Park station, being the jewel in the crown. Just down the line, and also in Villa Park, is a second surviving station, the Ardmore station, and another prize for the Villa Park community. In part two of this mainline video, we will start by visiting these two remarkable surviving Chicago Aurora and Elgin stations. Then we'll journey another seven miles, going through four stops in Lombard, three in Glen Ellen, one in Wheaton, before finally completing our journey at the Wheaton Station, which was the Chicago Aurora and Elgin Railway Hub. It was also the site of the Chicago Aurora and Elgin Rail Yards and is the final stop in our tour of the Chicago Aurora and Elgin disused stations and facilities. The Villa Avenue station was opened in 1902 as the Secker Road station and was closed in 1957 with the closure of the railway. As we can see, the final version of the Villa Avenue station still stands proudly today, the crown jewel of the remaining CAE stations, and is located at 220 South Villa Avenue in Villa Park, Illinois. This was a full station with a ticket agent. The original station was a small frame building with both platforms being to the east of Villa Avenue, which was then Sucker Road. The station was upgraded in 1911 to a very nice brick structure with a clay tile hip roof, very similar in design to stations in Berkeley, Elmhurst, and High Lake. The present station was then built in 1929 to much fanfare. It was designed by Arthur U. Gerber, a staff architect for the ca &E Railway, in a Tudor revival style. After the railway closed in 1957, the station building was purchased by the village of Villa Park in 1976, and so has remained in excellent condition, serving as the Villa Park Historical Society and Museum. The westbound station was much smaller, a frame building, perhaps eight feet by eight feet, with a shed canopy roof, and stood on the northeast corner of the Villa Avenue and Trackway intersection, about 180 feet from Villa Avenue, and then hard by the Ovaltine plant. The original name of Secker Road appears to be referencing Henry and Margaret Secker, who owned nine acres of property where the ca &E station was placed in Villa Park. They were immigrants from Darmstadt, Germany, who farmed in the area and ran a small hotel. They are today buried to the east in St. Mary's Cemetery in Elmhurst. The Villa Park station is also marked by its close association to the adjacent Ovaltine plant, which was built in 1917 and stopped production in 1985. Portions of the plant have been torn down, including its iconic smokestack in 2008, but much of it has been converted to condominiums. Rounding out our description, there were a few sidings to the east of the station and to the north side of the dual trackway, serving Ovaltine, in a matter of speaking, as well as a coal company. The next station, Ardmore Avenue, is the second Villa Park station and located about a half mile west by Southwest. See you there soon.
first station was opened in 1910 and closed in 1957 with the closure of the railway. This station was located near Ardmore Avenue and Park Boulevard in Villa Park, Illinois. Originally, Villa Park and Ardmore were separate subdivisions. They merged together as Ardmore in 1914 when they incorporated as a village. Then in 1917, they formally changed their name to Villa Park. The name Ardmore, by the way, comes from the Gaelic and means great height. So perhaps upon further review, they felt that Villa Park was a more appropriate name. The Ardmore station was built in 1910 to enable developers to shuttle potential customers from Chicago to their new Ardmore subdivision. This subdivision consisted of over 340 lots, and the station was paid for by the developers Ballard and Pottinger. They hired Ballard's nephew, John Van Bergen, a noted prairie-style architect and protege of Frank Lloyd Wright, as the architect for the station. As one can see, the station is still in excellent condition today and houses the Villa Park Chamber of Commerce, giving the village of Villa Park the good fortune of owning two of the handful of remaining Chicago Aurora and Elgin stations, both of these stations being prizes as well. The Ardmore station was a full stop with a ticket agent. The westbound platform was somewhat smaller and located on the east side of Ardmore Avenue, about 150 feet east of Ardmore Avenue. As we head west to the next station, we'll see a signal-based artifact remaining on the north side of the trackway, about two-thirds of the way to the next station. That next station is Westmore, the first station in Lombard, located about eight-tenths of a mile from here. We'll be there soon. Westmore Station opened as the Homemakers Station in 1902 and closed in 1957 with the closure of the railway. During its lifetime, it was also known as the Myers Road Station. The station was located near the intersection of Westmore Myers Road and South Broadway Avenue, North Broadway Street in Lombard, Illinois. The eastbound platform was located on the southwest corner of the intersection of Westmore with the trackway about 100 feet west of Westmore Road. This eastbound platform was a wooden frame structure about 12 feet by 8 feet in dimension with a hip roof along with a wooden platform. The westbound platform appears to have been on the northeast corner of the Westmore trackway intersection and likely consisted of a wooden platform. As mentioned, this station was originally established as home acres for a subdivision to be built south of the tracks but then changed to Westmore in the years to follow. 
There was a 13 car passing siding to the south of the station and also a seven car industrial siding to the north. The station site is marked with a very nice informational poster installed by the Lombard Historical Society. We'll see two signal base artifacts along the north side of the trackway between here and the next station, one being just past Highland Avenue and the second being just past Lombard Avenue. And that next station is at Stewart Avenue in Lombard, almost a mile due west. See you there. The Stewart Avenue station was opened in 1902 and closed in 1957 with the closure of the Chicago Aurora and Elgin Railway. This station was located near Stewart Avenue and Ash Street in Lombard, Illinois. This station was a flag stop. The eastbound station was a modest wooden structure about 8 by 8 in dimension with a hipped roof and no ticket office. It was located on the southeast corner of the intersection of Stewart Avenue and the trackway about 50 feet from Stewart Avenue. The westbound platform was a wooden platform and railing and was located on the northeast corner of the same intersection. As with the other Lombard stations, there is a very nice informational poster provided by the Lombard Historical Society that marks the spot of the station today. The next station is a Lombard station, less than four tenths of a mile to the west. We'll see you there soon. Lombard Station opened in 1902 and closed on the 3rd of July 1957 with the closure of the railway. The larger eastbound station was located near the intersection of Main Street and East Willow Street in Lombard, on the southeast corner of the intersection of Main Street with the trackway. The smaller westbound platform was directly across the tracks, 
at the northeast corner of the same intersection, and in later years consisted of a wood structure about 6 feet by 10 feet with a flat roof. The Lombard station was a full stop with the ticket agent. The eastbound station was a large brick structure, approximately 40 feet by 60 feet, with a canopy that covered the eastbound platform. As it was also an electrical substation distributing 600 volts of DC power to the main line, the design of the station was very similar to the Clintonville station, which we've already seen and which still stands along the Elgin line. In 1906, Lombard purchased electric current from the substation for street lamps and commercial use. A year later, it was being used to power Lombard homes. This power substation also provided residential power to the city of Wheaton, a few miles to the west. On the south side of the trackway, just east, a freight spur led to the Hammerschmidt Oil Company. As with the other Lombard stations, there is a nice informational poster marking the spot of the station today, installed by the Lombard Historical Society. Lombard, which has the nickname of the Lilac Village, and which yearly hosts a lilac festival in May, was settled in the 1840s, and shares some early heritage with Glen Allen to the west. Lombard was incorporated as a village in 1869 and was named for the real estate developer Josiah Lewis Lombard, who died in 1902 and is buried in Massachusetts. One Lombard notable was Harold Gray, the creator of the iconic comic strip character Little Orphan Annie, who was raised and had his initial studio in Lombard. The next stop on the line is Green Valley, also in Lombard, about four-tenths of a mile to the west. Valley Station opened as the West Lombard Station in 1902. It closed in 1957 with the closure of the railway. This station was located near the intersection of Brewster Avenue and Willow Street in Lombard, Illinois. The Green Valley Station was a flag stop. The eastbound platform was located on the southeast corner of the intersection of Brewster with the trackway, while the westbound platform was on the northwest corner of the trackway intersection. The eastbound station consisted of a modest-sized wooden shelter, perhaps 8 by 8, with a hip roof, while the westbound station consisted of a smaller shelter, perhaps 4 by 4, with a shed roof. The stop was originally named West Lombard, but then later renamed to Green Valley after the title of a novel by Lombard author Catherine Reynolds. There is a very nice informational poster marking the spot of the station today. This was installed by the Lombard Historical Society. There is also a remaining artifact located at the northwest corner of the intersection of Brewster Avenue and the trackway. Perhaps a signal base, a light base, or possibly a flagstop base. On our way to the next station, we'll see a signal base artifact to the north of the dual trackway. It's situated about midway between the two stations just before we head over Illinois Route 53 and the east branch of the DuPage River. The next station is Glen Oak in Glen Ellen, about six-tenths of a mile to the west. Onward!
This station was opened as the Pickwick Station in the 1907 time frame and closed on the 3rd of July 1957. This station was located just east of Hill Avenue, where the trackway intersected with Hill Avenue in Glen Ellen, Illinois. The main eastbound station was on the south side of the trackway, about 300 feet east of Hill Avenue. This was a flag stop that primarily served the Glen Oak Country Club. You can still see the remnants of the Glen Oak Country Club stone gateway just to the southwest of the former station. The main station was perhaps 30 feet east of the gateway path leading to the trackway. The eastbound station was a significant sized frame and stucco building, about 35 feet by 10 feet, with a multi-tiered gable roof. There was also a canopied waiting area for westbound traffic on the north side of the dual trackway, directly across from the eastbound platform. The station was originally dubbed Pickwick in reference to the Pickwick Country Club, which established a nine-hole golf course here in 1910. The name was changed to Glen Oak Country Club a short time later, with the Glen Oak name being based off the towns of both Glen Ellen and Oak Park to best represent their membership constituency. The Glen Oak Country Club is still a thriving establishment to this day, to the south of the former trackway in Glen Ellen, Illinois. Note that the Glen Oak Station was once a ca &E favorite for mid-century photogs as they could easily take overhead shots from Hill Avenue, which was then on a bridge over the trackway. The railway underpass has since been completely filled in, however. We'll point out that underpass when we get to the west side of Hill Avenue. On our way to the next station, we'll see a signal base artifact to the north of the trackway, about half the way there. And speaking of that next station, it's Taylor Avenue just eight-tenths of a mile west. So we'll see you there. Avenue Station was opened in the 1907 time frame and closed on July 3, 1957 with the closure of the Chicago Aurora and Elgin Railway. The station was located at the intersection of Taylor Avenue and Walnut Street in Glen Ellen, Illinois, with platforms on either side of the bridge over Taylor Street. The eastbound platform was located about 30 feet west of the bridge and the westbound platform about 40 feet east of the bridge. This was a flag stop in both directions, 
requiring passengers to set the flag to alert the train conductor to stop. The eastbound platform consisted of a small wooden frame waiting room, about six by six, with a hip roof, and a wooden platform for the eastbound traffic. There were steps leading up to the eastbound platform from Taylor Street below. Just across the dual trackway and to the east of the bridge, a wooden platform and a small wooden frame waiting room, about four by four, with the hip roof and a railing, served as the westbound platform. The stations were located at the head of a bridge over Taylor Street. Today, this can occasionally be a bottleneck to north-south traffic in Glen Ellen, as the underpass is only large enough to accommodate a single direction of automobile traffic at a time, in addition to a heavily fortified pedestrian lane. The next station is the main Glen Ellen station. It's about six-tenths of a mile west of here. We'll be there soon. Glen Allen Station opened in 1902 and closed on the 3rd of July 1957 with the closure of the railway. The station was located at the northwest corner of the intersection of Main Street and Duane Street in Glen Allen, Illinois, and south of the trackway. A large brick Citibank building now sits in the same spot as the eastbound station building. Glen Allen has put up a very nice metal plaque marking the location of the Glen Allen Station facing Main Street. The Glen Allen Station was a full stop with a ticket office. Originally, this station consisted of a wood frame structure, perhaps 10 feet by 15 feet in dimension, with a gable roof, but was replaced with a beautiful stone building in 1926, architected by John Archibald Armstrong in cooperation with the Glen Allen Plan Commission. There was also a canopied waiting area on the north side of the dual trackway, just across from the main station to accommodate westbound passengers. As elsewhere on the main line, trains were powered via the third rail over this portion of the railway. The Glen Allen station area also accommodated a few industrial sidings to the west and south of the station. Glen Allen originated as a stagecoach way stop between Chicago and the Fox River Valley way back in the 1840s. The growing settlement then went through several name changes in the ensuing decades and did not incorporate as a village until 1892, shortly after settling on the idyllic name of Glen Ellen. This came about after townsfolk created a small lake by damming a local creek, and with the discovery of local mineral springs, the town then asserted its identity as a regional health resort. They named their watery creation Lake Ellen, after the given name of Ellen Hill, wife of then village president Thomas Hill, 
who is one of the driving forces behind the creation of the lake. The next station along the main line is College Avenue in Wheaton, Illinois, about one and a quarter miles southwest. We'll see you then. The College Avenue station was opened in 1902 and closed in 1957 when the railway shut down operations. This station was located at the crossing of Hill Avenue near Crescent Street and College Avenue in Wheaton, Illinois. This was a flag stop. The eastbound platform was on the south side of the trackway, while the westbound platform was on the north side of the trackway. Both platforms were on the north side of Hill Avenue. The eastbound waiting station consisted of a small wooden structure, perhaps six by six, with a shed roof, located on the south side of the trackway, a little more than 100 feet from Hill Avenue and south of the current Illinois Prairie Path. The westbound waiting station was a small wooden structure about six by six, but with a hip roof and was located 75 feet from Hill Avenue on the north side of the current Illinois Prairie Path. As there were at many railroad crossings along the Chicago, Aurora, and Elgin Main Line, the College Avenue station featured a crossing guard station. This was a small 6x6 building with a hip roof and was located right along Hill Avenue, where a crossing guard would ensure that crossing automobile and pedestrian traffic could pass safely over the trackway. The College Avenue stop was named in reference to nearby Wheaton College, which was founded in 1860 and was a little more than a half mile to the west. We'll see a pair of signal base artifacts still remaining on either side of the dual trackway, about midway between College Avenue and the next and final station on the main line. The next and final station on the main line is the Wheaton Station, the Chicago Aurora and Elgin hub for all branches and operations, and it's just over a mile southwest of here. We're in the home stretch.
Wheaton Station was opened in 1902 and closed on the 3rd of July 1957 with the closure of the ca &E Railway. The Wheaton Station was located at the northwest corner of the intersection of Main Street and Liberty Drive in Wheaton on the south side of the dual trackway. This was a full stop with a ticket agent, baggage rooms, restrooms, a large waiting area, central heating, the works. And it's not surprising as this station was the hub, the center of the entire ca &E Railway. All CNA trains came here and departed from here. As the ca &E would say, this is where they leave from and where they return to. In the early 1900s, this station was originally a large two-story wooden structure, perhaps 100 feet by 30 feet in dimension, with a gabled roof. Later in 1912, the station was rebuilt as a brown brick single-story building, about 100 feet long east to west and 32 feet wide north to south, featuring a clay tile hip roof. It was designed by H.R. Wilson and Company of Libertyville, Illinois, and followed a general Elizabethan aesthetic, which then Wheaton Town planners favored as their theme for the downtown area. For westbound traffic, there was a canopied platform on the north side of the tracks, directly across from the eastbound station building. Like Glen Ellen and Lombard to the east, Wheaton has deep roots in DuPage County history, having been established in the 1830s by the newly arrived Gary and Wheaton families, who laid claim to more than 1,700 acres near the present-day Wheaton. The settlement of Wheaton was platted in the 1850s, encouraged by the newly arriving Galena and Chicago Union Railroad. Wheaton then incorporated as a village in 1859, with Warren Wheaton as the first president. In 1868, Wheaton became the DuPage County seat, and we can still see the venerable disused county courthouse sitting alongside the trackway just to the south. Wheaton later incorporated as a city in 1890, with Albert Gary as their first mayor. After the closure of the railway in 1957, the station was abandoned, until it was rented for a few years around 1960, serving as the Democratic Party headquarters for DuPage County owing to its central location and proximity to the DuPage County Courthouse just to the east. By 1978, however, and likely several years earlier, the station had been demolished and the site turned into a parking lot. The AE and C Railway was originally headquartered here in Wheaton, just across the street from the main station, at the southeast corner of Liberty and Maine. Unfortunately, this administrative building was destroyed in a fire as a result of a lightning strike in March of 1913. The administrative offices were temporarily moved to the second floor of the Wheaton Main Station until 1915. At that time, they were more permanently moved to the Traction Terminal Building that we previously visited in downtown Aurora, Illinois. Sometime in the late 1940s or early 1950s, the CA&E built another administrative building, once again in downtown Wheaton, this time at the southwest corner of Liberty Drive and West Street at what is today 400 West Liberty. This was a single-story red brick building with C, A, and E lettering over the porticles facing north, towards a trackway. All C, A, and E markings on the building have since been removed, but you can still see the fastener holes in the concrete over the doorways, which once held the lettering. This building was well situated, a little more than 100 yards due east of the dispatch tower, and a little less than 1,000 feet northwest of the C, A, and E Wheaton Shops building. The Wheaton Rail Yard, just a few blocks west of the station, was the heart of the entire CA&E operations. The rail yard had a large footprint and eventually extended from West Street on the east to Bridge Street on the west, and from Liberty Street on the north to Child Street to the south, covering about 25 acres in all. At the heart of this rail yard was the Wheaton Shops building, 
a very large and tall single-story building where train cars were maintained and repaired. It was located approximately where the three Wheaton Center apartments are situated today. Another key building was the dispatch tower, which was located in order to give it clear line of sight for the trains entering and departing on all three major branches of the railway, the main line to the east, the Elgin branch to the north, and the Aurora branch to the south. This tower was located on the south side of Liberty Drive at what is today 555 West Liberty Drive in Wheaton, Illinois, just west of the new administrative building. This new dispatch tower replaced an earlier tower. The earlier tower was a large wooden frame structure with a second story turret for circular visibility. This older tower was located in the west arc of the circular drive fronting the renewed Wheaton Center apartments, about 150 feet southwest of the new dispatch tower on Liberty Drive. Wheaton facilities also included two electric power substations, one located on Child Street near Main Street and one located on Liberty Drive. Both of these substations have long since been removed and the Child Street substation is now a parking lot. There is little remaining of the former rail yard which once dominated the area south of the tracks in Wheaton. However, there are a few remaining vestiges hiding in plain sight, if you know where to look. These are along Carlton Avenue, which did not exist until after the rail yard was removed, as this was a former pathway of the South or Aurora branch of the CA&E Railway. The first of these vestiges is at the northwest corner of Child Street and Carlton Avenue, at what is today 649 Child Street, or the Wallfield Building. This building has the appearance of an airplane hangar and has been here since at least the 1940s. It appears to have been directly or indirectly involved with the CA&E Railway, perhaps for storage or maintenance. You can still see a short stretch of in situ rails in the gravel parking area of the building with the ghost tracks heading off in a northwesterly direction. Just to the north of this building is another vestige it's another building which existed alongside the railway and was also likely involved with the railway in some direct or indirect way. This building is today referred to as 300 Carlton Center. You can see that the building is angled to Carlton Avenue in two segments and also towards the Metro parking lot. This makes very little sense with today's street configuration, but it makes much more sense when viewed from the historical aerial photographs showing that the building was originally built to accommodate the curvature of the railway in the rail yard, heading from south to west. Both this building and the building to the south at 649 Child Street were built sometime between 1939 and 1956, based on the available DuPage County aerial photographs. So we've reached the main station in downtown Wheaton, Illinois completing the main line that was 24 stops and stations along the way and about 15 and a half miles from Forest Park. Full disclosure, we did do that in two days because with all of the frequent stopping and starting and recording and a little bit of exploring, it just takes a lot longer. We decided to, to do it justice and do it over the course of uh, two days. So that's it for the main line. And uh, we hope you enjoyed this and found this interesting. Um, and uh, if you're so inclined, please like and subscribe.